Good morning, Professor Liu. Good morning. So can you share with us what made you decide to uh, teach the topic of China in transition, growth model change and innovation at CUHK MBA program? I think, you know, the major reason is that, to, you know, when we learn the lessons from the financial crisis, the global crisis, and uh, we automatically found that uh, the growth model we are we used to, you know, to cope, you know, got to be changed. And I think, uh, for for example, in China, you know, or many other economies in Asia, uh, originally we had just uh, we had such a growth model uh, like mass production and the mass exportations, and uh, then we will check our thoughts like that what we keep ourselves, you know, survive. And actually, we haven't left us a little money to do the I and the D, and so we couldn't climb up the ladder of the value chain quickly. And so we got to change that. And the Western countries are thinking the same question more question as well, because what they think is that why U.S. is saving so low and why we are saving so high. This is different questions for different people. So, but the similar challenge for us is that we got to change our growth model. And uh, otherwise, we can never cope up with the changes of the new trend. So that's the reason I pick up the topic. And uh, why here? Because, you know, Hong Kong is a good place, in my eyes, to be access to the information and uh, access to the whole world, you know the academic and the professional you know, circles. I have a lot of friends over there, so it's easy for me to change the views and the comments and the points with them. So to upgrade my knowledge, and also it's good for me to learn while teaching. So you mentioned that uh, you name your students participants. So does it mean you have very interactive classes and that the students learn better from your experience? Oh yes, I think it's very good. I'm very satisfied with the performance. Among my participants, I think 20% are international. Yeah, they're coming from uh, Russia, Germany, and uh, uh, India, and, uh, and many other countries. And also, we have the local participants, many from Hong Kong, and 20% from mainland China. So it's a good collection. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good mixture. Uh, and people are bringing their experiences and their feelings about the topic, how we can change our growth model, and what's the role got to be played by the government, and what kind of role got to be played by the market, and uh, what's the shortcomings in the past. So it's a very active you know, participants, they are very active and uh, they, they are full of the spirits of uh, pioneering and uh, keep digging. So it's good for the group discussions and the presentations. Very good. good. So can we now go back to uh, China's growth? Yes. Um, can you explain, in your opinion, how um, like if China's growth would be bad for Western countries? And how can those countries work better with China in the future? I think it's a very important uh, issue for today's world is um, communication. Yeah. China got to be uh, much better in the future, try their be best, and uh, China should try its best to better the communication and the publicity job, to let the whole world understand her much better. Yeah. And also, uh, China got to do his homework in a serious way and with certain degrees of transparency. So it could be more acceptable by the whole world. On the flip side of the coin is that uh, the, 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 the rest of the world, especially the West, should understand that and all should be fully aware of that. Uh, fast growing China or a, a fast changing China is a benefit to is beneficial to everybody in today's world because uh, you know if you uh, China grows faster 
and China needs more from the whole world. So the whole world can benefit from its progress and by joining the game and it's a win, which is a win-win. Mm -hmm. And in your view, uh, for the next five years, what are the major challenges facing China, Asia and the rest of the world? I think a lot of changes will be happening and because, you know, we are under heavy pressures and uh, with the change, okay, we need to change and we change ourselves, change our growth models. In the whole process, I needed a change of the cooperation cross-border. So this is our common task. Um, specifically speaking, I think in China, in the next five or 10 years, definitely we will be facing some challenges. Like the first one is the uh, restructuring of the whole industries line by line. And uh, to attend this aim, you got to carry out the reform and opening up policies. And uh, reform and opening up policies is very important because if you want to restructure some things, you got to build up some fresh ones and new ones. Then you need a fresh crop, and uh, you, you, you got to take into your country a lot of international talents. But talents is uh, just a starting uh, point, right? Then you got to change your governance and better your governance, better your culture, and make China more inclusive, okay? So that would be a, a daunting task. It's not very easy. And uh, also, I think China got to change its growth model, as I mentioned. The growth model is very important nowadays and uh, China got to face its domestic market more than external markets to boost the, the domestic consumptions. Anyway, China has 1.3 billion people. It's a huge market, okay? To tap the potentiality of the domestic market is very important. And thirdly, I think uh, um, China uh, will be facing, you know, a very important uh, challenge that is, we got to better up the rule of law, okay? Because if you wanted to restructure the industries and you know, diversify the ownership, for example, and to give more to the private sector, before such a doing, you got to make sure you have a sound and solid platform to do this, to make sure that we won't copy the lessons which we witnessed in Russia, okay, in the transition period of time. So the rule of law is very important. You must uh, create the atmosphere and to the environment. It's a mechanism. It's all fair play, okay? So the, for institutional investors or private sector investors, they must uh, be fair, fairly treated in a bidding, through a bidding system they can acquire certain part of yeah, others, which they can pay maybe better than the previous ones. So the rule of law is very important. We've got to strengthen and enhance that in the next five or ten years. Last but not least, I think in China, there is a big challenge to deal with democratic uh, uh, demography issues because uh, sooner or later China will be into an uh, aging society. So the pension fund, is that enough? Can we trust the, the existing you know, arrangement to support the aging population so large? So if there's any gap in between, how we can bridge that? But China, I think I'm, I'm, I'm still very confident in such a doing because we have a huge resources about that. So long as we can carry out the reform, for example, in taxation areas, then through the tax reform, I think in China, China can give more, much larger room for the localities to maneuver, to deal with such a difficult issues like restructuring of the industries or build up the pension fund, bridge the gap, 
and the support aging society in the future. So I think it's uh, still quite a large loan to moon maneuver. China ha is rich in tax revenue because it's a fast growing society. Still, even this year, you know, because it's a, we have a lot of downturns in, the, in face of the financial crisis and the impact coming from the euro areas. But still we can witness uh, six, seven percent positive growth in GDP. I think in the future this is a steady growth with us. I think in these areas I think we are have we are having, you know, common challenges like uh, the first thing first is the green growth. Okay. I think uh, the whole growth internationally we got to hand in hand to do a much better job in dealing with that. Firstly we got to enhance the technology usage and the information sharing and the standard setters and uh, a lot of in, in the standard setters got to be working together to raise the standards gradually so to realize the green growth with us make sure that it's with us. And also I think we got to strengthen the enforcement on global basis. Because so we make sure they say the market discipline is part of the market discipline. Second, I think globally, China in particular, we got to work better with um, um, the, um, the uh, cross-border cooperation. The cross-border cooperation, cross-border resolution scheme is very important nowadays, especially in God against any financial crisis or Brax when event. Because we are very much concerned about the situation happening in the Middle East, in Syria, and uh, the conflicts between some countries. So I think uh, um, we got to work out some uh, platform and the resolution plan and to make sure that uh, we will have concrete measures to deal with the crisis beforehand or in the midst of the crisis. Yeah. And the money laundry uh, uh, anti-money laundry, anti -money laundry, anti -money laundry yeah. and anti-terror financing is uh, common challenges to the whole world and we got to hand in hand to do better in these areas. This is very important to us as well, right? Thank you very much.